Hey dudes, how you doing? It's Saint. We're gonna talk about the 3080 crashing and if it's happening to you, if for some reason you weren't able to download the driver or you don't want to download the driver, what you would have to do to fix it and what's, you know, what, what's this all about? So 3080s started crashing. Apparently you would get crashed desktop. It's all over Reddit and different forms like these where people would get crazy lines, all that kind of stuff. And people didn't understand why. Obviously this wasn't really well known at first because well, getting a 3080 was pretty hard. <laughs> I don't have a 3080. Even if I wanted the 3080, I wouldn't be able to get it because it's been, it's been really hard to get. I have my notes here on my MacBook because I thought it was important to have a little kind of like list of what's going on. As most of you know, though either way I'm gonna explain it, Every graphics card usually has a Founders Edition, it has an AIB, and it has a reference spec. So the reference spec is like the bare minimum that the AIB needs to go with so that it can be considered a RTX 380. Now the Founders Edition is the one made by Nvidia specifically, while the AIBs are basically Asus uh, companies like gigabyte you know all these people they are the aibs what is going on now this information was found on igor's lab while this may not be everything that's going on with the problem it is a possibility as to what's going on so 3080s come with six capacitors that are meant to clean out noise from high frequencies and also clean power deliveries there's two types in this case we're talking about pos caps that are conductive polymer tantalum solid capacitors and MLCCs, which are multi-layer ceramic chip capacitor. So POS caps are meant for larger areas and MLCCs need to be grouped together to get a higher capacity. Basically, the card is too weak or does not have the necessary specs to go up to the boost clocks that it comes from factory with. Why are people tying this over to the capacitors and what capacitors are being used? The MLCCs are a little bit more expensive than the POS caps. The POS caps are the cheaper alternative in general. So most of these companies, AIBs, even the Founders Edition, they've gone with the majority, if not all POS caps. Just to give you an idea, the Founders Edition has two MLCCs, the Zotac, has zero MLCCs, the MSI Gaming X Trio has one MLCC, and the Asus Tough Card has all MLCCs. And what people have started to notice is that, for example, Zotac cards are actually the ones that are having this problem the most. Tough cards, though, this is related, but not. it's not the entire reason as to why this is happening. These Asus cards can actually support the highest boost clock out of most of them. So, it's a coincidence? I I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm, I'm not that sure. There's obviously more things at play. It's not just this. This is just one factor of what could be a pretty big issue or a pretty small one. It just could be something dumb. It could be something that's coming out simply because it's a new card. It's a new generation. Things are kind of trying to figure out where they go and it's, it's normal, okay? It's new technology, it's normal for them to have some flaws in the beginning. One of the solutions that's kind of more of like the regular kind of amateur, I guess, solution is simply lowering the power limit down to 95% in something like MSI Afterburn or even offsetting the clock by 25 or 50%, which isn't the ideal, but it would solve the issue. Now, what was Nvidia's solution? They released a driver. Basically, it was to maintain better stability on certain games, which always happens, it's normal, and also solve that little thing. Now, if we look at the card itself and what various sources, things like Jay's Two Cents, for example, have seen inside the card, using the card, seeing how it's performing, it's just lowering down by about a bin, a bin being 15 megahertz. It's, it's just lowering down under very specific load. And other than that, nothing else changed, like the card didn't get slower. It again did affect the boost clock just a little bit, but it's not hindering a lot of performance. Honestly, I haven't seen that it actually just lowers the boost clock completely. I think they just changed the logic behind it. It lowers a bin down 
under very specific loads or when it's kind of seeing that it's gonna have a little bit of trouble it lowers the bin down my take on it to be really honest is they're giving amd a chance to prove themselves i think the 3080 has not had a good launch and this is the, op the perfect opportunity for amd to just come and steal the show because look at the 3090 the 3090 does not give more performance like of course it's not something meant technically for gamers but performance wise for example if you if there's someone that just bought the 3090 they're gonna be pretty disappointed to think that they paid what a hundred percent more for 11 percent increase in fps max like it's not it's not really worth it and i think nvidia is having a little trouble honestly and i think that they're giving AMD, even though they had the head start, they're giving AMD a chance to definitely say like, okay, you made this mistake, here we come. It's gonna be an interesting, interesting month to see what Radeon has in store, so thank you so much for watching, guys. Leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, please. I upload videos every single weekend about tech or gaming, and I hope you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.